Hey everyone, Pastor Tim here. I'm actually in my mobile office right now out in the car down in Portsmouth. Uh, just finished up reading some of the uh, the book here, Does God Want Us to Be Happy? I just finished out uh, chapter three, the question about who's the happiest person in history. So as we kick things off here, a couple things I want to remind you. If you haven't picked up the book, you can certainly go back and watch the earlier videos and then watch this one and watch the ones going forward. Um, it is available at God's Girls, which is a Christian bookstore down in uh, Northampton. And you can just hop online, type in God's Girls Bookstore, and you can find information there. They do actually have them in stock. Uh, people also are picking them up at Christian book distributors and also on Amazon as well. So I want to let you know about that. Um, our hope for this book is just to kind of get us thinking about the topic of happiness. Our whole theme for the summer is good times, and we're talking about the, the idea of celebrating and good times and finding the blessings in life. Uh, we're doing that in the sermon series. We're doing that with our upcoming Christian comedians coming on August 12th, which is a Thursday night. Um, having opportunities for people to connect this, um, this upcoming Sunday at all the campuses. Um, after the first service, there'll be kind of a, a gathering with some light refreshments and some games for kids and things like that. So yeah, our theme is just celebration and happiness, not because we're ignoring the challenges, but because we also want to focus on the blessings that God has for us. So um, the chapter that we're in now, chapter three, the question is, who is the happiest person in human history? If you know Randy Alcorn, if you've been following the book, you know that he's going to try to make the case that Jesus was the happiest person in human history. So I want to um, I want to go back to this question that I've been uh, asking every week so far, which is, who's the happiest person you know, and what are the traits or what are the characteristics of that person who's happy? Uh, if we look at the life of Jesus as it's described in this chapter, you'll probably see that some of the ways Jesus is described in Scripture and and expounded on by Randy Alcorn, those things line up with people that you and I know are happy. Uh, they're not some like random Christian traits for happiness and then some random other human traits for happiness. God has made happiness kind of exude itself uh, as far as the emotions in very similar ways. Now, the deep causes of happiness are different for people depending on where they are in the relationship with God. Jesus had the perfect cause that led to his perfect happiness. And obviously, Randy Alcorn is going to make that case in this, um, in this chapter. So let me ask you the question for you to ponder, maybe talk about with some friends. Do you perceive Jesus as happy? Do you perceive him as um, content, maybe peaceful, trusting, holy, righteous? Maybe those are the things that naturally come to our mind when we think about the topic of Jesus or the person of Jesus. But to think about him as happy is often something that's hard for people to grasp. Um, so just think about that for yourself. When someone says Jesus was happy, is your immediate reaction no, is it, yeah, maybe, is it, uh, I guess so, is it, yeah, I'm sure that's true, but I don't know why. Whatever it is, there's just a moment of reflection for you to think about, do you see Jesus as happy? Does that surprise you? How do you respond to that? So, um, with that being said, I mean, one of the first things that's addressed here is that uh, in uh, Proverbs chapter 8, wisdom is described as being present with God at the creation of the universe, and Jesus is called the wisdom of God. And so that's in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 24. So when you put those pieces together, you say to yourself, okay, well, if this wisdom is Jesus and wisdom was with God the Father at creation, what do we see about it? Well, then the description comes in um, Proverbs chapter 8, where we read this. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he marked out the foundations of the earth, I was beside him like a master workman. I was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing in his presence, rejoicing in his world, and delighting in mankind. Now, the thing I want to emphasize there is I was there at his side, constantly at his side, filled with delight, rejoicing always, rejoicing in his world, delighting in mankind. Four descriptors of happiness right there. And so, yes, Jesus was and is happy, the happiest person who, who ever lived. Uh, one of the contentions that people are going to bring up as well. Isaiah 53 is about Jesus being a man of sorrows. I think Randy Alcorn does a good job posting or describing how, yes, he was a man of sorrows, but it's in relation to a particular thing. He's not always sorrowful. He's sorrowful in light of the cross, in light of sin, in light of what he will need to do to redeem the world. But there are also moments of great joy and mirth in the life of, um, in the life of Jesus. So here's, here's a question that's been kind of bouncing around in my head as I'm reading this and thinking about the topic of happiness and thinking about thinking about Jesus. Um, I talked about the idea of laughter in my sermon 
uh, recently about the idea that like laughter is this strange thing, but it's a gift. It's a gift from God. Um, if we are made in the image of God and we are, we enjoy laughter and we enjoy humor, we have to think that humor is something that God gets as well, that he invented as well for us. Um, I just was thinking to myself, you know, what are the things that I find humorous that you find humorous? Are the things that I find humorous things that God would find humorous as well? Would he laugh at the same things I laugh at? Do I take joy or do I find humor? Uh, do I find things comedic that would break God's heart? And vice versa, the things that God enjoys and laughs at, would I look at them and say they're silly or they're not funny? Right? So I want to align my sense of humor with God's sense of humor. And this is a sometimes it's a faith exercise because we could say, well, this stuff makes me laugh, but I don't know if it's really honoring to God. Well, we have to trust that if God actually has good for us, he has good for us and wants us to laugh and experience joy, I should align my humor with his, not ask him to change his and align it with mine because he's the perfect source of all things. So there's another question, you know, what do you find humorous? And are they things that honor God or are they things that don't honor God? Just food for thought there for you to think about or journal about, maybe discuss with a family member, friend, small group, whatever, uh, whatever it might be. Um, I love the idea of the for the joy set before him from the book of Hebrews 12. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. There's goodness over on the other side for Jesus. There's joy, there's happiness, there's celebration. Sometimes it's going through the challenge to get to that point. And so I think that's important for us. If we don't have happiness in the moment, we may have to work our way through the darkness to get to the light and the happiness on the other side. Jesus gives us a model for that, that we just don't always have to live in this constant state of smirking and happiness and um but it's a, it's a piece of the human puzzle. It's not the only factor um, in our human life. I think what probably stood out to me and probably to you as well was the idea of like Jesus laughing and Jesus having a sense of humor. When you look at the way Jesus taught, there were a lot of humorous things that he, uh, he taught about or used as um, tools for teaching. As I was reading through this section on page 27 over to page 30, um, I started thinking to myself about this very um, very verse in Matthew 23 where Jesus says, you strain out the gnat and you swallow a camel. And I don't know if I saw a picture uh, at one point, a drawing, or I just had an image, but I had a, it was a kind of a caricature drawing, a cartoon of a Pharisee with a huge camel like sticking out of his mouth. And Jesus was making a crazy, crazy, uh, giving us this insane image to get us to think about how ridiculous it is to live a certain way, which is to like externally look right, but internally be far from God. And so um, I want to note here that Jesus used humor in his teaching. And sometimes when we are around people who use humor in their teaching or use humor in their communication, talking about spiritual things, we can go, whoa, 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 that's, this is spiritual. We got to be really serious. But again, if Jesus used these humorous methodologies or humor, humorous images to teach, that should give us the freedom to do the same, and we should see that there's something good about the way he could tie humor and deep teaching together into more profound, profound truths. So, um, you know, maybe pushing us out of our comfort zone a little bit about how we think about Bible teaching, how we think about Bible study. Is there a place for humor? Is that healthy? Clearly in the mind of Jesus, it is. It is a good thing to, again, not just be only joking all the time, but to allow humor to be a part kind of, of what is happening in our study of scripture, in our spiritual life, it, it's not all serious. It's There's serious times and then there's hilarious times. And very appropriately, um, Randy Alcorn po points out that Jesus understood Ecclesiastes 3 perfectly. Jesus is true wisdom, uh, the truest form of wisdom and pure wisdom. And so Ecclesiastes says there's a time for weeping and there's a time for celebrating. Time to tear down, a time to build up. Jesus knew that perfectly. And so he knew when it was appropriate to laugh. He knew when it was not appropriate to laugh or when we should be mourning instead. Um, I think Randy Alcorn in the chapter just makes a great case with scripture after scripture after scripture, giving us the image of uh, Jesus as uh, a person who is happy. He he gives us an image at one point, and really at the end of this end of the uh, chapter, uh, he wraps it up and says, uh, "On the new earth, as we play and feast, joke and tell stories together, always looking to our Redeemer." I truly believe that no smile will be bigger, no laugh louder, and no happiness more contagious than his. And that's really the question I want to kind of close with is, when you think about heaven, do you think about just the lack of pain? Or do you think about the good that will replace the pain? Um, Randy Alcorn actually just recently um, on his 
Eternal, um, I think it's called the Eternal Perspectives Ministry is the name of his ministry. But uh, he posted a, an article he wrote about the idea that he thinks in some way saints who have died and gone ahead of us can see what's happening on earth. Now, to be candid with you, um, I don't agree with Randy Elkhorn's perspective there. I think he's taken a scripture and made too big an extrapolation from looking at a particular scripture. He and I could disagree on that and still be brothers in Christ. We don't have to hate each other. That's just a difference of opinion. But Randy Alcorn does make a powerful case for that by saying it's not that humans in heaven can look at earth and think that something's good if it's sinful, but they have proper perspective because now they see the big picture and they understand kind of what God is doing in the midst of it in a much more clear way. And so in light of that, they're able to even see bad things, but still celebrate um, the fact that God will one day redeem it. And uh, eventually one day scripture says there will be no, no more suffering or sin or pain, anything like that. Everything will be made right. But what I want to offer is that Randy Alcorn's perspective on the saints who have died, can they see what's happening on earth in any form? Uh, his, his argument is based on the idea of proper perspective. And so I want to close with that as an idea when we think about happiness in Jesus. Um, understanding Jesus as a happy God and as a human, as a happy God-man, if you will, when he was here on earth, as the incarnate God, um, the reason that we can have, the reason that we um, can believe that he was happy is it's, it, we have to have a proper perspective to do that. To remember that Jesus doesn't always express all of his attributes externally in the, um, in the way that we would expect him to. So Jesus can embrace the challenge of sin and also have a celebration going on and live in that tension. And we do that too as humans. We have moments where we celebrate and we're sad. We have moments where something sad is going on, but then we have a memory of somebody and we laugh and we're, we think it's humorous. And so just remember that Jesus being happy doesn't mean he's always happy and only happy. It just means that he is happy. It's part of his nature to be happy. And as Genesis 126 says, we're image bearers of God. And so we should be happy too. We have to have, we have, to have a proper perspective on who Jesus is and the fact that he has all the traits of God perfectly expressed in their perfect balance. Um, and we too uh, are called to live like that where we expect and experience moments of happiness and we also experience moments of sadness and that's that's what it is to be human uh, on this side of the fullness of eternity and full redemption so perspective i think is going to be helpful for us as we continue to to dig into thinking about god as a happy god i gotta tell you i'm really excited for this next chapter chapter four which is what are some christian myths about happiness how do we think about happiness uh incorrectly. What are the things that are not true when we have to have scripture and the truth of God reshape our minds um, so we think properly about the topic of happiness? Um, that'll be coming up next week. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll be coming back over the next handful of weeks. On average, reading about a chapter a week. Toward the end, we'll read a couple chapters, uh, a couple chapters a week at the end of the year, at the end of the uh, summer. But um, feel free to leave comments, questions. If you want to email me, feel free to do that. I got a really great question from a gentleman the other day. Um, and we had a little bit of interaction on the topic of happiness and sadness and where's God in our happiness and where's God in our sadness. So appreciate what he sent to me. If you have thoughts or questions, feel free to email me, tcarpenter at bethanychurch.com. Have a great day and we'll see everybody soon. Take care.